How's it going guys? I hope you're all staying well. I hope you're all staying safe. Now, as we're all aware, um, it's mayfly season. And so I figured it's about time that I start tying some mayfly. Um, now, there are so many different ways you can tie a mayfly, uh, pattern-wise. Um, so I thought if I took the very basics of um, a mayfly with a detached wing, um, with a little bit of CDC, a little bit of hackle, um, and a little bit of ingenuity, we can make it even better by using more realistic wings. And that's how I created this. Now, the wings are made from laminated, printable, transparent labels. Um, and I then, obviously, like I said, I laminate them with sellotape. Um, I put a little bit of color into them. And what you get is a very, very, very realistic looking mayfly. Now, as you can see, this mayfly or these two mayflies are a sort of a yellowy green um, colour and that's because that's what they look like when they first start emerging um, when they're young. So I've decided to make uh, three different mayflies, obviously young mayfly, um, then they get slightly darker um, and then a spent mayfly which is where the wings are sort of flat along the water. Uh, but for this uh, tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this one um, and then I might do one for a spent mayfly as well. But as long as you get the logistics of this, you'll know how to make the rest of them. Now I suggest that you guys get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee um, because it's quite a long uh, process doing this and it does take a bit of a while going through all the steps, getting the wings printed, um, done properly, correct to the correct size, cut out uh, to make the uh, detached bodies, which I suggest you do if you're going to tie more than one mayfly, do all the detached bodies first and then tie them onto the uh, the hook um, but I'll show you the entire process so I hope you guys enjoy this um, please leave a thumbs up uh, which is the like button uh, click the little red button which says subscribe um, leave me a comment if you think this is quite a cool pattern uh, let me know how you get on with it I haven't actually tested it yet but um, I figured you know you can't get more realistic than realistic wings on a mayfly so I don't see why it won't work um, my theory is that it might work even better for those trout that are a little bit more finicky. Thank you, let's get straight to it. Now guys, what you'll need to do this is, you'll need some CDC. Um, I got this from Kindle Flies. Um, it's just a natural color, two grams of that. A little bit of um, olive cock, like so. Get that in focus. You'll need some pheasant tail you'll need some foam. This is what you'll make the detached body from. Um, I got these from, you can get them from any website, troutflies.co.uk, do them from like for a pound or something. By getting a color that's similar to what the mayfly bodies are already like, you'll um, have to do less adjustment with a marker pen. Um, and you'll also need some clear, transparent, printable uh, labels. So I got the Avery brand. Um, you want to look for the symbol up there which says transparent and you want to look for this code I don't know if you can see it on there, it's J8560 um, and this has 21 labels on an A4 sheet now I got this from Amazon, I'll leave a link to everything that I use in, a, in the description below you have to get um, inkjet transparent printable labels you also need some marker pens now I just went into Tesco's and got some cheap marker pens like so you do need a permanent marker you'll need some yellow and you'll need some brown um, so any kind of brown permanent marker will do here's another variant which is that one these are paramount because you'll use these to color the wings and to color the, the um, detached body you'll also need some sellotape a pair of scissors you'll need a CDC clip um, I I'm a student, so funds are quite low, so I've just used a paper clip. Um, and you also don't need a rotating vise. Um, I've got a cheap four pound one that I got off eBay. Lastly, I'm using some dry fly hooks. Um, they're just size 10. These are Ch Charles Jardine ones. Um, they're just dry fly regular. Um, you can use bigger hooks, smaller hooks. It's completely up to you. Um, size 10 is what works for me on other dry flies, so I just continued using this one. Um, you don't need a lot, you just need um, the bare basics, a lot of patience, um, and you'll get this done. 
Okay guys, so once you've got all your material sourced, you want to head on to your laptop to create the wings. Now you want to search for Mayfly Realistic Wings. There's several that come up. Um, these ones are quite good because you spend less time cutting around the edges, it's a lot easier. However, I figured because I'm going through all this effort, I might as well choose ones that look more realistic to me with a dual wing um, and a little bit of colour to them. So I chose these ones and I saved it to my desktop. Now you'll notice that the orientation of the ones that I have here is different to the ones that originate on Google. And that's because I went onto Word, uh, cut it down the middle, uh, saved as two different images and then stuck them together. And this is incredibly important because this bracket here is what you will use to attach to the hook. So once you've done that, save it to your desktop and then you can go on to Avery. Now if you've used a different company, um, label company, then you won't be able to do this, but I've used Avery for this reason. Now you want to type in your product code. Mine is J8560. So you click on that and it'll come up with different ways you can download the template. Now you can do it on Word, however, the online uh, design and print software on Avery enables you to copy and paste the wings uh, much quicker. And I'll show you exactly why. You want to click select this design. And then on the right hand side where your navigator tool is, you'll see edit one and edit all. Now if you click edit all, whatever you do to one label will happen to all of them. So this is why I use this software. So you add your image, browse for file, click the Mayfly that you chose, add it, let it buffer, and then you want to crop the image to get it as close to those wings as possible. Like so. Let it buffer again. Now I know that I can fit two Mayfly wings on each label, but you will have to play around and see what works for you. Um, print it on blank pieces of paper, not the label paper, otherwise you'll burn through them just finding the right size. Once you're satisfied, um, you can then use the labeling pe uh, paper. So you want to control, copy, control, paste. Now as I said, I know I can fit two on each label. Um, you'll have to play around with the size to make sure they are the correct size. Once you're satisfied, you want to click preview and print. Print yourself, print now. I'm not going to save mine uh, because I don't need to, I already have done. So I'm going to click don't save, download as PDF, bish bash bosh, it'll take you to your home page and this is what you'll print. So file, click print and you'll have your wings. Okay guys, so once you've, um, you've got all your material source and you've printed out the uh, wings, you want to head on over to your desk and get your foam um, to cut out the detached bodies. You want probably about a millimetre or two millimetres and try and cut as straight as possible. Use a sharp knife, a ruler helps. You might have to go over it a couple of times like I'm doing. should just break away like so and there you are you're left with a strip which you'll now use to make the detached bodies right then guys so once you've got your bobbin attached to your vise you want to take your white 6 hot thread and just generally make some tight turns across the entire length of your bobbin and then finish up at the point to make a few turns to secure it I like to grab this end and just try and trap it in between the vise like so. Then you want to grab your foam and you want to overlap it so that it looks like that. And cut it with your pair of scissors. Right, so once you've cut it, you should be left with something that looks a little bit like that. Now you want to clamp the two edges, level them up if you haven't already, turn them over to that side, grab your scissors and you want to cut on an angle and this angle is the point to which you'll attach the foam to the hook um, first. So you want to cut at that kind of angle there, like that, like so. If you guys can see that there, you've cut an angle. Now you want to get your pheasant tail and you want to pluck three, measure them to the size that you believe is the correct size 
and then tie them on. And then this is where you'll attach the body. Now, you wanna take your time with this. You wanna grab the two edges like that and you wanna slide it on from underneath so that it wraps around the shank of your pin. Your first turn needs to be small and you wanna do one or two light and then correct it. You'll have to spin this around several times during the process of this just to get it looking um, even across the entire body. Once you've done three turns per, uh, per rib, you want to grab your, grab your thread, take, transfer it underneath all of the material and then background and this will then give you the next clamping point, which again should be just a tad bit bigger. Then go around it three times and repeat this process going along the length of the foam. Now once you've done <clears throat> a few, you want to try and count each one of the ribs and you want to make sure that there's seven. Six I tend to find is a bit too small and seven just seems to be about right. So I've got six there so I'm going to do one more. Take it underneath the bottom and you want to try and create a tapered body. So as you can see it's small um, at the beginning where the tail is and it gradually gets bigger and bigger. Um, what helped with that was doing that little cut on the edge um, to taper it up but as you get towards the end you don't want to tighten it too much because that will create the, um, the ribs to be a bit smaller. So make three turns and then finish off with a whip finish. So you just need three like so and there we go. Now once you've done that you want to add a little bit of head cement to where you've done your whip finishes. Get your UV light on. Okay, awesome. So now you wanna cut your thread off as close to the body as possible. And then you can unravel your thread that you initially first tied on. Now, this is a bit of a process, but you basically wanna grab both ends and just try and wiggle them. You don't wanna take it completely off because we wanna orientate and set our tails um, to look spread. So once you've got a little bit of movement towards the end of the tail, um, you want to grab your three tails and try and spread them out to make them fan out like a mayfly does. What tends to, um, to work well is if you gently add a little bit of friction with your index finger to hold them apart. This bit is a bit finicky and sometimes it's easier to put the uh, head cement on first and then do this. And just get it nice and secure and then you're able to just take it off. Now if, you want, if I just want to show you, that's what it should look like. So a nice even body. There we are, get out the light with a nice taper, with your three uh, tails nicely fanned out. You wanna grab your um, thread that's been left over and gently pull it. And this enables us to see which direction to tie our uh, detached body onto the fly. Now as you can see, I can then coil up the tail like mayflies do. Um, so it's up to you how much you want to do that, um, but you've got the option to do it if you want to. Now obviously spent mayflies are a little bit more flat, so again it's dependent on what you're tying. Uh, once it's off of the pin, you can then colour it, which I'll show you now. Okay guys, so you want to go and grab your marker pen and grab your yellow. Now I'm going to be tying one of the yellow uh, duns, the early emerging mayflies, the young ones. and you want to make sure that wherever it coils like so that's the direction that you want to color so I'm going to color the top of it 
Now to do this, I'm not gonna color each, every, each and every segment right down to the bottom. I'm just gen generally gonna run across the top like that on both sides and then taper it off almost with a little bit of shading, just dabbing it on there. And then same again. Then you want to take your brown and you want to run it along the top, the very top of your detached body. And I'll show you a picture now of a mayfly. They usually have darker um, indentations along the back of their body towards the, their tail um, rather than the front. And again, we're just sort of tapering this off, um, adding a little bit of definition. Doing the same on the other side. And then what I like to do is go into the cracks and just gently pull down and create a little bit more depth to them. Do it on both sides. Alright guys, and there we have it. There is your coloured detached body. Completely done. With seven ribs on it and a little bit of colour to add to it as well. So what we're going to do now is put that aside and work on doing our wings um, and attaching our hook. So we grab one of our size 10 dry fly hooks like so and pop it onto the vise. Right, once you've got your hook um, safely secured to your vise you want to grab your uh, uni thread. I've changed over to the black um, ATOR and tie it on. Now you want to go as far back as where the hook point ends. So about there. Cut off the tag end. Throw that in the bin. And now we want to start making our, our wings. Once we've made the tapered bodies and we've tied the thread onto the hook, you want to grab your printed wings which should have looked like this when they came out try and zoom it in and so I got two per label now some of them crossed over um, but I'm not too bothered about that because I can get a few um, usable wings um, out of one A4 sheet anyway so what we want to do is cut around the labels so there you are guys, that's what you should be left with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut along the middle and separate the two. So that it looks like that. Once you've done that, you want to take some plastic, some sellotape and lay it flat across the desk. So I'm just grabbing my sellotape here. I always leave little tags in it so that it's easy to remove. You want to get a length out. Once you've got your cell tape out, you want to lay it flat, sticky side up um, across your desk. You'll then take your new wings, your transferable wings, printable clear transparent wings, and place them face down on the cell tape. Like so. Now press down hard because it'll make it easier when you remove the, um, the back of the white paper. Okay guys, once you've got your edge, you just want to very gently take it off and that should be what you're left with. Now this is where you want to colour your wings if you want to. So I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow again and I'm just going to go around the whole wing and gently colour it in. I'm going to add a little bit of brown as well actually, just along the top. Right, once you've coloured it um, to what you want it to look like, you then want to grab your tape again and you want to come up, cut out a similar size. I always keep these tag ends by the way because I can just attach them to uh, my tape so I don't lose the edge. You want to make a cut and you want to gently rest it on top evenly on top of the fly 
and then you should be left with that a laminated wing so from here you want to cut along the edge of the fly uh, without cutting down the middle because remember I told you that this this bit in the middle here was where we would attach uh, the wings to the hook so do not cut that out cut along the edge of the wings okay guys once you've um, once you've cut around the wings they should look like that <clears throat> okay then guys once you've cut out your wings you're going to grab your detached body and attach it to the hook now it, you want it to be the same length as the hook if not more so I'm going to add one more rib which I usually do do and I'm going to hold it with my right hand and make the turns and then once you've done that you want to cut the remaining foam but put a taper on it so cut it to an angle like I do there do it on both sides and then do it going down as well like so now to secure the white thread what I do is I do one turn onto the hook shank like so just to give it a bit of resistance so that when I pull on it it doesn't spin around and once you've pinched it like that you want to shorten your thread up because mine's too long and just make a couple of turns around the white, right, th the white thread and around the hook shank you now want to properly tighten down on the detached body so we've got that on now twist it round so that it suits suits the look and you want to grab a little bit of your remaining foam like that and you want to cut about an inch off of it there we are and then attach this to the top now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just just gently clip the edges off so I can get a little bit of a taper so it looks like that and then tie that on there we go keep on going until you're right back onto the last rib of your extended body and that's what you're going to use to uh, clip over the wings so make sure it's tightly secured now here's where you want to attach the wings now what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of head cement to that middle section just to give me enough time to wrap around it so I'll grab my pin like so and I'll add just a little bit to the middle of here okay now this bit can be a little bit fiddly but you want to remove your line like so and wrap it see how I'm doing that? wrapping it around the hook and securing it with two hands at the top like so now here's where yeah, it gets a little bit fiddly because you've got to wait for it to dry enough for you to make your tight turns so get your light on so there we are guys once it starts to set you can actually release it and you just you really want to make sure that cement is hardened before you start wrapping because it's thoroughly annoying when you start doing your body um, and start adding CDC and the wings start um, coming undone okay once you think it's had enough time you want to wrap back and what I like to do is to do one through the middle bring it round go round once and then one through the middle on the right hand wing and then go round and this will just make sure that that wing is secured in by more than just a little bit of glue essentially once you've done that you want to take your thread and get it around to the back end of your wings give it a few turns and this is where you'll start adding your CDC um, and your body 
but you need to get quite a lot of CDC on there. Now once you've done that, you want to take your clip, like so, run it across the top, leave yourself a little bit of room to cut along, and there you go. So trim the feathers off, and you should be left with your little tag end which you will then attach to the uh, line. So once you spread the thread, you then want to uh, use your index finger and your thumb to keep it open, run the thread over the top of the clip, and then gently let it slide off and then release. And you should be left with your CDC like that. Now you just want to twist it to secure it. Now you want to leave it there. Now what I do is I grab a little cock curl and trim the butt off like so. Make myself a connection point and I just do a couple of turns securing it in place. Right, and then you carry on with your CDC, spread the wings so you can get in there a little bit better. It can be quite tricky because it's quite a tight fly this once you get down to it. And there we are. And then bring it to the front. Tighten it up. Like so. Now, with your cock curl, um, I'm using green, you can use yellow or dark depending on what type of fly, type of mayfly you're imitating. You want to grab your hackle pliers and gently rib this around. Flat this off. Now you can cut your remaining hackle off like so. Pop it in the bin. So yeah, once you've um, cut off your hackle you then want to tighten up sometimes it's easier to wet your fingers and just grab all those feathers and really try to bring them up because you don't want to trap them when you're doing your whip finishes like so and then you want to bring your foam over the top and just try and gently spread your CDC and your hackle to either side of the foam the easiest way to do this is you grab your foam with your right hand and your thread with your left. Gently pull, support the nose of the fly, the eye of the fly with your finger and make a couple of turns. Now once you're at the top, you want to trim all of the resisting hackle that wasn't playing ball. and you can trim off your foam now. I like to leave um, a little bit, just in case it's sort of a, almost like a popper. Um, it just rides above the water. So you wanna trim that like so, and there you have it. Now you wanna do your whip finishes. I'm gonna do them underneath the foam, so underneath this section here, and I'll show you how to do that. There we are, and then we just want to add a little bit of head cement. Finish that up, cut the thread off, place it on your desk. Now you're not done quite yet, because you want to finish doing the colouring on top of the foam. So grab your Colour again, your marker pen. Grab the brown, run that along the top. And there you are guys, there you have it. That's your real thick looking mayfly. Now personally I don't think you're going to get a more realistic looking mayfly than this. I mean it, you, you've literally created a mayfly using realistic photographs of their wings um, with a extended body with the three uh, tails that they usually have the same color 
that they have when they're young. You can do this, like I said, with um, with older mayflies or spent mayflies, which tend to be a bit darker. Um, I can show you that now. So there's a, there's a slightly darker one. So you can really play around with this and get this to exactly what you would like. All right then guys, so I've shown you how to make your mayfly. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but once you get going, you can churn them out. Um, and you can taper them exactly to what you need, what the mayfly look like um, on your rivers. Um, you can do this with other um, flies as well, caddis, um, duns. I'm sure you can do it with almost anything that has wings. Um, so I think it's quite a cool way of, of imitating a mayfly. I'm yet to see how it, work, how it works, sorry. Um, and I'm sure that if you guys tie one in the next couple of days, you'll beat me to it. So please let me know um, how you guys do if you do tie this. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. This is my first tutorial. I'm sorry about the camera work. Leave a little thumbs up for the like if you like the video. Um, ta 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 tap on the little red button, which is the subscribe button. It helps me out massively. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers, um, which would be awesome. At 500, I'll do a giveaway. Um, you know, maybe I'll give away some of these flies. You never know. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoy. Stay safe um, and peace out.